Okay, quick little trapper's tip. Um, sometimes if you show up at your sets and the trap is still in the bed and it's sprung and you think, oh man, something dug up my trap, a lot of times that's not what has actually happened. If you look around, you won't, you know, you can sometimes tell, but generally, um, or one of the possibilities can be that the coyote or the canine is rolling in your set. So the question to ask, first question I always ask is what do you do with your bait and your lure? You put your bait down in the hole, which is what most people do, and then a lot of people put their lure on the outside of the hole, like right here against this rock. Always put your lure down in the hole, put your bait down in the hole, put everything down in the hole, get it down in there six, eight inches deep. You'll really see that those canines will quit trying to roll in your sets because they'll be interested in trying to get to the bait and lure and not trying to roll in it if it's up there on near the ground. So give that a try and see if that doesn't help you uh, canines rolling in your sets. So you're probably wondering, what the heck am I doing looking into this old Ozarks cabin? Kind of an old Appalachian looking cabin because that's what we have here in the Ozark Mountains as well. And what I'm doing is I'm getting dry dirt. These places like this are the best places to come and find dry dirt. So I'm going to sift a few buckets of dirt out of this and I'll have enough dry dirt to put in a pile full of traps this winter. Um, I still use um, wax dirt but um, like right now it's not overly cold out but everything is wet because we've had a lot of rain. I don't even think it's just, it can be down to about freezing at night but in the days it's going to be in the 40s um, so it's a perfect time to be using dry dirt and I don't have to waste all my wax dirt until it gets much colder. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm digging up some wax dirt here. So here's the finished product of the dirt that came out of the old log house. And, it's, and as you can tell, I mean, this dirt is perfectly dry. Now there's some cow manure, obviously dried cow manure that's mixed in there with it, but most of the time I'm trapping on farmland so that doesn't mean anything. These coyotes and whatever animals are just totally used to that. They could give, they could give a really a, a care less about whether it's got a little bit of um, cow manure in it. Even if I'm on forest land, they go back and forth so much between pasture and forest land. It's not going to mean anything to these coyotes. So, so for you can see, I got four, five buckets of dry dirt in literally like 15 minutes of sifting, and now I'm ready to go. And really where this dirt is coming from is this old cabin. You can see they were living in this part. And this part they had made into like a little pole barn thing. Because here in the Ozarks, I mean, if you had sheep or goats or chickens or whatever you had, you had to keep them pretty close to you because the predators are going to get them. So back in those days when these folks were living, this cabin is probably, I don't have any idea, early 1900s maybe. Um... You know, I mean, it's got newspaper and stuff they were using for insulation on the inside, so that ought to tell you. But they, so, so there's dry dirt that's been in here for hundreds of years, so it's perfect for trapping. So just a trapping tip of the day right there. So I got a question the other day, um, which was about how do I have my trapping vehicle set up? Um, probably 80% of the time I trap out of a side-by-side. Um, about 20% of the time I trap out of a truck. When I need to go longer distances, I, uh, you know, for certain people like I'm getting ready to go and trap on a couple of private landowners that want me to clear up some coyotes for them and it's about 20 miles from my house and I'll have to trap out of a truck, obviously. Most of the other stuff that I trap, I have about between forest service land and private land, I probably have access to about 7,000 acres. Um, just basically very close to my house, so I can use um, my side-by-side -side to go to all that. And I probably have another three or 4,000 that I could trap on, um, but I just haven't done that yet. So, so most of the time I'm trapping out of a side-by-side. -side. So today I'm putting in sets, so I have my um, big container here, big plastic container. And in this I've got my drill with my two-inch auger, and then all my traps are sitting in there. And then all these buckets. This was a bucket with some peat moss, and um, I always put lids 
on my buckets because uh, sometimes when I'm four wheeling through the forest and stuff and going up steep embankments and down I, I've had times where these buckets will roll around in here no matter how much I tie them down so I just put lids on them this is a bucket of dry dirt it's got my little scooper in there that's another bucket of dry dirt this is uh, my bucket with all my trap making supplies so I've got snips and scissors and um, pan adjustment, screwdriver, needle nose pliers. I've got my set making gloves, my sifter, all my tools in here that I need, uh, stake driver. And then this bucket over here is kind of my like my catch all. Um, it's got CDs in there, it's got T bones, feathers, um, some cotton balls, some sheep's wool. Um, all, all basically all my flagging things, all my extra things. If I find another turtle shell, it goes in there. Um, just everything like that. So I, when I need extra stuff, it's all in there. And then, um, I guess I should show you this. Up on the uh, top of the side-by-side, -side, I have a, uh, um, a gun rack, waterproof gun rack that's got storage in it. So I can carry ammo in there. I can carry, you know, whatever I want to in those three, two big pockets, one small pocket. And then um, I have two. I have a 22 rifle in there, which is my main trapping um, dispatch weapon. And then sometimes I will carry a shotgun, and then sometimes I'll carry an AR just as just for uh, you know in case I need it out here for something. Sometimes the coyote will run across a field in front of me or something like that. And then inside my side by side, I have my extra jackets and stuff. This morning I started out; it was 26. Now it's like. 38 or something so I had to peel some layers off and then um, I've got some gloves and then down in here this is some more feathers and stuff in this bag and then down in here I have a little tool bag with all my lures and my baits and my urines and everything and I keep that up here in the front because I just want to make sure I keep it all separate and you can see there's some little cotton jersey gloves those are my set or my lure um, gloves so so this is all up here everything else is in the back Everything else is all pretty much situated. And then up in the front, I added a light bar because I'm out so early all the time, especially during the work week. So I needed extra light. So I added this light bar, which is excellent. And I'm gonna add some more lights up here on the sides. I do not have a roof. I do not have a windshield. Goods and there's bads of that. Um, goods are, I like the open feeling all during the summer. Cause I use this on the farm when I'm not just trapping out of it. Um, I like having the open feeling and everything. Um, during the winter when it's cold, boy, it'd be nice to have that roof over me and that windshield on. But then I wouldn't want it on in the summer. And so I just, I go back and forth and I just can't really commit to, um, to anything. The only other thing I did to this is, you can see there's a couple of little switches here. That switch on the right, the red switch is for my light bar on the front. That second switch little toggle switch is to add is for power I added power to the back um, which you can see is right there I can pull that cord out and I can attach you know like a seed spreader um, a sprayer I can attach lots of things to this um, so if I need power out of my side by side I have that um, so that's kind of what I've done on this I actually really really like this side by side it's the Honda Pioneer 1005 so I can, um, there's actually two more seats underneath um, the bed, so I can actually haul like five people in this if I need to. I took the netting off of both the doors. I kept the netting on the back just so stuff doesn't fall out. But most of the time the seats are down and I'm using it for farm work, hunting, trapping, things like that. Um, but it's excellent, it's got a lot of power. It, you cannot hardly get the thing stuck. You gotta really work at it to get it stuck. Um, you can pull stuff with it. You can haul lots of stuff with it. It's got a dump bed. It's a perfect trapping vehicle for me. So that's kind of how I have it, my uh, situation set up for, for what I'm trapping out of. Um, and then when I move to my truck, all I basically do is take these buckets and, and stuff and just throw it all in there and do the same thing out of my truck. But I can get to so many more places in this vehicle than I can my truck. So I really try to use this. Hope that helps. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments. And uh, let me know what you guys are trapping out of. And don't forget to subscribe and uh, tell your friends about our channel. Talk to you, talk to you next time.